Yes? Mrs Booth? Yes? And you are? I am an acquaintance of Mr Turner. May I have a word with him? Oh, I don't know. Is he expecting you? He doesn't receive visitors here as a rule. Yes, I can well imagine. I understand how important his privacy is to him. I'm sorry to breach it in this way. In fact, I should like to discuss with him how it may be protected in the future. I'll just step in, shall I? No, just a minute. I don't mind waiting here if Mr Turner has business to finish. How dare you charge in without being invited. I must ask you to wait outside. I assure you that Mr Turner will be interested in seeing me on this occasion. Oh yes, most interested. This occasion? You. You're the fellow who upset him at Queen Anne Street. I am prepared this time. Well, you're not welcome. Please leave, or I shall call for assistance. Come along. Oh, oh, do, uh, oh, oh, oh please, oh. madam. I wish to avoid a scene. Then get out. Let go of my arm, Mrs. Booth. I do not wish to hurt you, but if you persist... Ah! You cosseted mother's boy. I've dealt with tougher customers than you. Out the door with you. What's going on? Is this the man who was bothering you at the gallery? Dyke! Smarden Dyke! All right, I... my dear, I'll attend to this. That'll teach you not to tangle with a Margate landlady, Dyke. You'll keep this short, shall we? I'll be next door. And you... What? Mind you, keep your manners. Well? Charming little house, Mr Turner. A good hideaway. You're trying my patience, Dyke. What do you want? All right. I want a painting. Unfortunately, I'll have to ask you to expand on that. I have an opportunity to restore the rightful ownership of Rutland House Estate. My father was swindled out of it. But it is being offered by private auction in two weeks' time, and I intend to buy it back. The only obstacle in my doing so is money. Or rather, the lack of it. I therefore need one of your paintings to sell. You propose to steal it? I don't see any hired thugs ready to do your bidding. You have a gun, perhaps? I don't need to threaten violence. My weapon is knowledge. I've undertaken some research since we last spoke, and a little detective work, too. I must apologise for my first approach. So clumsy, so ill-informed. You see, I presumed that your conspicuous lack of a knighthood would be your Achilles' heel. Because, of course, so many of your fellow academicians, some much lesser men than you, have already received honours. I could persuade you to part with a painting on the hope, completely illusory, of course, of preferment. Your reaction, however, made me wonder why it seemed to have so little sway with you. And... Following my researches, I came to a surprising conclusion. You don't need a knighthood. You've gone one better. You have already secured your claim to posterity. Burial, next to Sir Joshua Reynolds' resting place in St. Paul's Cathedral. You simply asked. And it has been promised to you, though not in writing. Where's the shame in that? Allow me to explain. By adopting a disguise last week, I was able to follow you for a day. You arrived at Queen Anne Street at ten in the morning. At noon, you took a cab to the Royal Academy. You were there for forty minutes. You then left in the company of some colleagues and chatted while you waited for a cab. I was close enough to hear some reminiscences of your travels in Italy. When a cab arrived, you asked the driver to take you to Marble Arch, and I was fortunate to hail one immediately after and had him follow you. And then, the surprise. You didn't stop at Marble Arch. You came here, to Chelsea. So? Your colleagues don't know you live here, do they? And you clearly endeavour to ensure that they don't find out. Inquiries in the locality prove both fruitful and amusing. Admiral Booth. <laughs> Shall I continue? Why does Great Britain's most eminent painter, recently acting president of the Royal Academy, live in such modest anonymity? Adopting the name 
of his mistress. I can see your arrangement with this woman is congenial. But it also threatens that tenuously promised path to St. Paul's. There could be objections in high places, particularly when it comes to keeping in with the good offices of our dear Queen, whose faith in the values of the family is now shared by all respectable people. That's what this boils down to, isn't it? You're not really a respectable person, are you, Mr. Turner? Mr. Turner, going out? <laughs> you won't need an umbrella. It's not raining out there. Just a minute! Stop! William! William, calm yourself! He's trying to blackmail me. I know, William. I heard. <laughs> I'm sorry, dear. There's nothing we can do. We must settle with him. All right. saw it. And it must either be here or in the gallery. An unfinished seascape? That's it. One of the Margate ones. Afternoon, Mr. Turner. Look for a jetty. Cheryl, help Hannah. I'll be next door. When did Dr. Moreau say be here? Two o'clock. Mr. Falk's letter is on your desk. All right. When you find the painting, call me immediately. And by the way... Yes, William? Not a word to Sophia. What's going on? Why is Dr. Munro visiting? We have to find the paintings, Francis. It's what he's chosen to give Smarden Dyke. Give to? I don't know how, but Smarden Dyke has some sort of hold over him. He's blackmailing him. Blackmail? Do the police know? No, and you mustn't breathe a word. He's in terrible fear the press will get hold of it. I think I know the painting he means. It'll be here somewhere. What has Smart and Dyke got over him? He's found out William has a mistress and he's living with her under her name. Here it is. Is she the one he was talking about? Not a word to Sophia? Yes. Sophia Booth, her name is. I don't know whether it's him getting strange in old age or a fear of her control. Well, he was ill, wasn't he? But I'd say as he recovered, his mind has got sharper. Why would he fear her control? He keeps having meetings with his solicitor about changing his will. That's her. I'm sure of it. And every time she comes here, it's... I'm so glad William doesn't have to put up with this squalor looking at me like it's all my doing. I resent it. Miss Danby? What, Francis? Say if I should mind my own business, but... Has he discussed the will with you? Lord bless us, no. William's as open as a clam. Is there anything I can do? You're such a very sweet boy. There he is. Good afternoon, Dr. Munro. Hello, Hannah. Ah, Francis. How are you getting on? Very well, Doctor. Call by sometime. I may have some other work for you. I will. Forgive me if I don't stop to talk now. Of course. Dr. Munro. Ah, oh, good of you to come, Edward. Not at all a distressing matter. How are you? Much improved. Oh, you've been unwell? The doctor was concerned I might not survive. My constitution is very robust, you know. All the walking I did in my youth. You'll forgive the professional curiosity. Who is your doctor? David Price. You wouldn't know him. From Margate. Margate? Really? Well, he's been my doctor for some years, since I went to live there. Seemed natural to keep him on. He's very discreet. Excellent, uh, excellent. Now, you're Mr Fawkes. You've had another letter, you said. Yes, this is it. His second letter of advice on the matter. Let's see. Uh, yes, it gets to the point here. Smart and Dyke now seems immovably fixed on you as a part of the restoration of his estates. You need to know that his mental disposition is very fragile. Lately he has been under the care of Dr Munro, whom you know. 
I strongly advise that you seek the good doctor's cooperation in bringing Dyke to a realisation of his error. It can otherwise end only in a bad way, incarceration either in prison or an asylum. He's right, William, and you were right to ask for my assistance. He's been increasingly erratic, disordered in thought, resistant to any of the remedies I proposed, whether physical or medicinal. And he missed his last appointment. I'm very concerned. Did he ever lose a close relative? Not as far as I know. Why? In my mother's case, she came to a crisis when my younger sister died as a small child. Where she'd been somewhat violent in language, she then became physically violent. Mainly to my father, but occasionally to me. I'm sorry. Got steadily worse over the years. I was just underway as an independent artist when the final crisis came. Your father was most helpful in arranging her committal. I'm sure you did the best for her. Your childhood can't have been happy. It was a blight, yes. On the other hand, it drove me to seek refuge and self-reliance in my art, so... You're remarkably sanguine. Now, to return to George, I think my presence might have a sobering effect on him at your meeting. Just what I was hoping you'd say. I'll be most grateful, if you could spare the time. When do you expect him? At four. Then I should call at what? A quarter to? Yes, good. Excellent. Well, you'll excuse me, I'm sure. Till then. I'm glad to hear about Dr Price. Always worth hanging on to a good man when you find him. I'll see you out. Cheryl, may I sit with you? This man Dyke is coming at four, so there's a... a wait. I confess I am nervous. In want of company. Uh, Hannah said you found the painting. It's here. Put something over it, would you? Off the floor? On the easel? That'll do. Use that sheet to cover it. Forgive me, Mr Turner. I can't believe you're handing that man one of your oils. Well, be that as it may, it must be done. But it's unfinished, so who knows? It's also unsigned. He might not be able to find a buyer. The trouble is, it's still unmistakably yours. And if he didn't sell it, he'd only be back to bother you again. Hmm. You're right. Damnation! Ugh. I'm too old to be doing with all this. I can only have it all before me again. On the row with Tom Girton, and our sketchbooks and a few pennies in our pockets. Thomas Girton? I know his work. England's finest watercolour artist at the turn of the century. Only 27 when he was carried off. Girton had lived. I should have starved. Oh, come now, Mr Turner. You're unassailable. Oh, I've been knocked down before. Not much regarded now. When you're younger, you dictate your own terms, create your own fashion. Later, you have your champions and you leave it all to them. And the knives are always out, waiting their chance. But your legacy, it's all here. Well, yes. That's right, boy. My gift to the nation. I've even bought some back from previous owners to make the collection more complete. How did that... Put that cat out, would you? Hmm. How long have you been helping me now? About three months. Is that all it is? I hope you don't feel I take what you do for granted. I mean, I've come to rely on you. I can rely on you. That's the point. You fish. Come fishing with me. Come to Chelsea. One Sunday, when the weather warms up. We'll catch our lunch, eh? Be glad to, Mr Turner. Mr Turner, I hope you won't think me too forward. I wouldn't raise it, only Miss Danby's in a bit of a state. Anna? What are you talking about? She conceals it so well. But she's worried you may shut up shop here. What if I do? She won't want for a home. She knows that. 
What the devil do you mean, then? Looking after the paintings means a lot to her. She takes pride in it, like a family duty. Well, this is not the time, Cheryl. If it weren't for... Don't trouble yourself, Hannah. I can find my own way in. It's a fire. Move the easel out of the way. Quickly! Damn, too late. There's one missing, William. Missing? What's missing? You know very well. Three paintings. You gave me three that were hanging at home before we moved to London. No, dear. Two. The other was unfinished. It was to be mine, and nevertheless. I won't be deprived of them. In sickness and in health, William. I've kept home for you these last 15 years, made you presentable in your high office, given you the solace of my bed, attended to your every need. Every need, William. And for all this, I've not had one penny towards the house, nor any acknowledgement of my son. I will not be deprived of the only things of value you've granted me. Where is it, William? But, dear... What? It's the question of what we give Dyke. So, you'll have me pay the price of your blackmail. <coughs> is that it? All right, Cheryl, you've been embarrassed enough. Mrs Booth and I have more to discuss. Leave us. Right, Mr Turner. Uh, Mrs Booth... Sophia, the painting is almost no value. I must have it for Dyke. It's unthinkable you would allow a madman anywhere near it. I'm taking it back to Chelsea now. I've had a letter from Fawkes. You'll understand as soon as you know no. what he says. No, no, no. It's part of the set I have been promised to John on my passing. Dyke is to be I here at four promises, o'clock. William. I won't be denied. <laughs> I must tell you, Edward, I'm not inclined to give in to his blackmail. The important thing is not to provoke him. We must do our best, calmly and rationally, to persuade him of the alternatives open to him. Such as? He's not unintelligent. There are many opportunities opening up overseas. Failing that, there's always the civil service. With the connections you said he boasted of, it shouldn't prove too difficult to find him a safe bolt hole. Hmm. Perhaps you're thinking his grand ideas of himself may prove an impediment? He seems to have as many personalities as people have coats. You never know who's going to turn up. There he is now. Well, I propose we put him in a position where he has to repeat his demands or withdraw. Having me here may create a sharper awareness of the criminality of his intentions and bring about a change of heart. Nothing ventured. Mr. Smarden Dyke has arrived. All right, Hannah. We're ready. You may go in now. Dr. Munro. Dr. Munro's here at my request, Dyke. I heard you were in his care, and I think it's fitting he should be here to minister to you in a time of distress. You mean as a witness to my blackmail? I didn't, though you named the thing for what it is. Have a chair. George. I'm here because you seem about to cross a line that will ruin your life. I can help you consider the alternatives. Well, there really isn't one that I can think of, Dr Munro. I've come for the painting because, if I don't have the means to restore the estate taken from my family, my life is meaningless. You can't have the painting, Dyke. I see. Your good name means nothing to you. You are willing to see all you've achieved trampled in ignominy. I don't have a choice. I thought I had, and was prepared to let you have a seascape. I was reminded, however, that, properly speaking, it isn't mine. It's already promised. And then I thought, this is true of all my paintings. They're all spoken for. Each one part of my bequest to the nation. There must be hundreds. You'd hardly miss one, would you? You might as well ask me to cut off me hand. It's not as if they're all of equal quality. I mean, there must How be... How f- dare you? Turn art critic now, have you? 
Um, perhaps it would be helpful to direct our attention away from the painting. Happily. Mr. Turner, my final plea. I have approached you three times and failed each time to get near you. I now know that some years ago you set up a charity for indigent painters. May I appeal to that generous man in recognition of our common humanity? Go to hell. Either way, hell is surely my destination. George, don't be a fool. Put the gun away. The painting, Mr. Turner. Or would you prefer an early meeting with destiny at St. Paul's? Do your worst. George, there is another way. George? George! Let me not abandon my great calling! No. No. William. William. Huh? You were dreaming. Oh, yes. The sea storm again. The siren voices. All's well. Sophia. I... I... I know. No. Let me say, Alden. I'm sorry. I know, dear. The sun's out. Look. Do you usually fish from here, Mr. Turner? Quite often. The fish aren't biting, the view's pretty good. The sky's never the same. Always have a sketchbook to hand. I was going to say, fishing makes a change. No, no, no. I never stop thinking and looking. Never stop sketching. Same as that duck. Paddle, paddle, paddle. No choice in the matter, eh? Spot the Sunday painter? <laughs> Happy dabbler. Reminds me of me. That day when I first came to Queen Anne Street. You progressed? I've uh, stopped, actually. I found I can paint for only one kind of public, and now, well, it just doesn't satisfy. Hmm. You have a deeper appreciation of art. It's outgrown your talent. You come to an important recognition that will save you a lot of unhappiness. Your greater appreciation is a gift. Treasure it. It makes you a highly skilled restorer. That's what I was thinking. I'm to be married soon. It's a steadier call than I reckon. Married? Oh, well, there you are. You can't really be married and a painter. My aunt is my wife. The Royal Academy... My mother. Many good painters are married, Mr. Turner. Constable? Ha! Prove my point. I want more bread on your hook there, Cheryl. Oh, they've nibbled it off. When? Getting married when? When I can afford a house. Hmm. That's what he's up to now. Sunday painter. He? Dyke. <laughs> After the wound healed and he recovered from knowing he was in Bedlam, Dr Munro persuaded him to try a bit of brush driving. It's apparently quite good. An unfortunate wretch to be born into the circumstances he was. Miss Danby told me about your donation. Well, in part that's a debt to the Bedlam that's perhaps overdue. Though it's for Dyke's benefit. Sorry, he falls into a different category now. Indigent paint, I see. Jarrell, you best be off. 
I'm thinking in Ramsgate when you finished here. Do you, Mr. Turner? You old highly privileged information, young man. You've witnessed some strange events while you've been with me. Oh, any dreadful events, Mr. Turner? Well, yes, Cheryl. Exactly. In the time left to me, I'd be a happier man if that knowledge was not available to the over-curious. I'll be frank with you. I'd feel insecure if you remained in London. Oh, I see. Exile. In Ramsgate. It's a hard fate, Mr. Turner. Do I detect a note of mockery, Cheryl? Perhaps a little. Well, desist. Mr. Turner, I've been provided with a free personal course in landscape painting. From its greatest living practitioner. If all it takes is for me to go home to repay that prize, well, it's really small beer. I'm obliged. The course, as you put it, is entirely incidental. You did all the work of learning. On the other hand, you provided me gratis with your diligence, your quick mind, and though not always entirely welcome, your good humour. You deserve a gift in return. That painting, the one you watched me working on. What about it, Mr. Turner? My wedding gift to you and your young lady. Oh, I... Not a word to Sophia, mind. I, 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 can't, I can't believe it, sir. It's on one condition. You're not to keep it. You're to sell it and buy a house. In Ramsgate. I, I will. Thank you, sir. I'm grateful, too, for your kindly attentions to Hannah. When I'm gone, Hannah's to be curator of the bequest, as long as she's able. The people at the new National Gallery will keep an eye on her. What's the time? Almost uh, noon. <laughs> this won't do. Nothing to show for our morning's labour, Francis. Oi! Alfred! Morning, Admiral! Any Morning, spare? How many do you want? Enough for a king's breakfast! The king? Well, those who ain't the Frenchy. You're in luck, Admiral. Come alongside. Gift was written and directed by Patrick O'Connor. J.M.W. Turner was played by Nigel Banks. Sophia Booth by Jane Pulford. George Smarton Dyke by Jim Newbury. Hannah Danby by Ruth Cameron. Francis Shoel by Stephen Dodd. And Dr. Monroe by Andrea Slosen. Recording and soundscapes were by Robert Burgess.